Hello guys, welcome back to E7 Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily E7 Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the shear force and bending moment diagram. In this lecture, we are going to show you that why we need to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram. The main reason to draw the shear force and bending moment diagram is to get the information about the reinforcement or steel bars. So, the shear force diagram is used to get the information about the transverse reinforcement or we call it the stirrups. Transverse reinforcement or stirrups. That how much stirrup should be provided in a beam in order to resist the shear forces. While the bending moment diagram is drawn in order to get the information about the longitudinal reinforcement. That how much longitudinal reinforcement should be provided in a beam in order to take the upcoming load on the beam. So now to explain in detail, I will take one example. Let's consider this is any simply supported beam. This is a hinge support and this is a roller support. So in this beam, he's been loaded with any uniformly distributed load of W. Let's suppose this is any load. So due to this load, the beam will try to deflect and it will create shear stresses and also it will bend. So there are two types of forces. One we call is the shear force and the other one is called is the bending moment. So if we draw the shear force bending moment diagram, this is the reference line for the shear force and this will be the reference line for the bending moment diagram. So the, these two will be the support reactions as this load will be taken by these two supports as there is no horizontal load so only the vertical load will be resisted by the two vertical supports so to draw the shear force diagram for this beam it will go up because the support reaction is upward and then it will go down here like in this way so this 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 will be the shear force diagram for this beam so now from the shear force we can see here that the maximum shear force is at the corner of the beam. Is at the corner of the beam. While at the mid spin, if you see here, at the mid spin, at this portion of the beam, the shear forces are very less as compared to the corner or at the support of the beam. So we can say here, we can see here that there is more requirement of the shear reinforcement or transverse reinforcement or the stirrups at the corner of the beam. So we should place the stirrups more closely at the corner of the beam while at the mid spin we don't need to provide the stirrups more closely but we can provide the stirrups at a higher distance from one another. I will later I will show that how we provide the stirrups in such a beam. Now look into the bending moment diagram. So the bending moment diagram for such beam will look like this way. So, the maximum bending moment can be seen here for this beam because the beam will deflect like in this way. So, there is no support at the middle. So, it will show the maximum bending moment here at this point where the shear force is zero. So, we can see here that due to the maximum bending moment acting at the mid of the span, at the mid span of the beam, we should provide the high reinforcement at the mid section of the beam. While here, if we look to this portion and to this portion, the bending moment is low. The value of the bending moment has been increasing from the supports up to the midpoint. So, there is less requirement of the reinforcement of the longitudinal reinforcement to be provided at the supports of the beam. While at the mid span, there is a high bending moment, so we need to provide the higher number of steel bars. So, now if I take the cross section of this beam, this beam, if I take the cross section of this beam here, if this is AA, so it will look like if this is AA section. So due to the high bending moment, we need to provide the high number of bars. So there will be the high number of bars according to the design. First, we get the bending moment. And then from this bending moment, when we get the MU value, we need to find out the reinforcement, RF steel bar. But for the A to find the area of steel bar, we need the bending moment diagram. 
So that's the reason that why we need the bending moment diagram because we should know that what is the maximum moment acting in our beam and at which point or at which location this moment is acting according to which we provide the reinforcement. So this is the reinforcement for the AA section which will be higher steel bar because there is a higher bending moment. Now if you look into this section where there is low bending moment if I represent these two sections by BB so the BB reinforcement will be mainly two bars or three bars but less than the this AA section if this is BB section so the reinforcement detail depends on the bending moment diagram here we have more steel bars because we have high bending moment at the mid span here we have less steel bars because we have low bending moment so bending moment diagram shows us that where is the maximum bending moment and where we should provide the steel bars according to our maximum bending moment similarly with the shear force diagram we should know we understand that how much space should be provided in the stirrups if this is my beam if this is my beam so the spacing between the steel bar should be very less the stirrup spacing should be very less at these points because the shear forces are higher at this point similarly here the spacing will be very less between the stirrups because the maximum shear force is here while at the mid spin there will be higher spacing between the stirrups because the shear force is almost zero at the mid spin hope you guys understand that why we need to draw the shear force bending moment diagram and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos thank you for watching our video